All Swift UI layout takes place in three steps. And understanding these three steps is the key to getting great layout every time. First, a parent view proposes a size for its child. Second, based on that proposal, the child then chooses its own size and the parent must respect that choice. And finally, the parent then positions the child in its coordinate space somehow. So propose, child decides, parent respects, parent places. Now behind the scenes, SwiftUI performs a fourth step for us. Although it stores its position data and size as floating point numbers, as doubles effectively, when it comes to rendering them, SwiftUI will round off any pixels to their nearest values, so our graphics remain sharp. It won't be half one way and half another way like that. It'll never happen. It's always directly on pixels. Now, those three rules, they might seem simple, but they allow us to create hugely complicated layouts where every view decides how and when it resizes without the parent having to get involved. To demonstrate this in action, I'd like to modify this basic template. Let's just do text hello world um, to have a background color like this. So I'll say text hello world has a background of dot red like that. So really, really simple. And you'll see the background fits super tightly around the text. Not exactly because it leaves a bit of space above and below based on the, the line height of the text, which we can't see obviously it's not black, but it's there. Um, but it's very, very close around the text there, which is really nice. It takes up just enough space for the content we provide inside. Now, think about this question. That's our text hello world here with background red. How big is content view? How big is content view? And as you can see, the body of content view, this, this whole property here, the thing it renders is some text with a background color. That's it. That's, and that's the entire body of content view. So how big is content view? And it turns out the size of content view, this thing here, is exactly and always the size of its body property. No more and no less. And this is called being layout neutral. Content view here does not have any size of its own. It instead happily adjusts to fit whatever size actually needed. Now, a while ago, way back in project three, I explained to you that when you apply a modifier like this background red here, we actually get back a new view type called modified content, which stores both the original view, text hello world, plus the modifier background red. And this means when we apply a modifier, the actual view that goes into the final view hierarchy is the modified view, not the original one. Text hello world isn't the one that's inside content view, it's text hello world with background red. And so, in this very simple layout here, the top level view inside content view is the background. And inside that view is the text. Now backgrounds, they're layout neutral, just like content view. So it'll just pass on any layout information as needed. You can end up with a chain of layout information being passed around. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Again, 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 until finally a definitive answer comes back. Now, I know it's a simple layout, but let's put it into our three-step layout process we'll end up with like a, a little conversation, as you were, between uh, SwiftUI and our content view. SwiftUI will say, um, listen, content view, I need to show you, you have the whole screen. I've got all this space for you. How much of it do you need? So the parent, in this case, SwiftUI ultimately, proposes a size to content view. You can have as much space as you want the whole screen. Content view says, I don't actually care. I'm layout neutral. Let me ask my child. So it'll say, hey, background, you can have the whole screen. That's what I was given. You can have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you want? So again, the parent proposes a size to his child. 
Condom U asks background. Background says, I also don't care. I'm layout neutral too. Let me ask my child. And it'll say, hey, text. You can have the whole screen to yourself. It's all there for you. How much of it do you need? Again, the parent proposes size to the child. And the text says, well, you know, I've got H-E-L-L-O comma W-O-R-L-D exclamation mark um, in the default body font. So I need exactly this many pixels of width by this many pixels of height. That's what I need. I don't need the whole screen. So this is step two. The child chooses its size. And now the background goes, ah, got it. Right on. Cool. Um, hey, uh, content view. I need X by Y pixels, please. That's what I was told. I want this. So content view goes, awesome. Love it. Hey, Swift UI, I need X by Y pixels. It's passing it back up again. And Swift UI says, okay, well, if you want this tiny bit of space and I gave you the whole screen, that leaves lots of space. And so I'm going to put you at the size you asked for in the center of my available area. And that's step three. Ultimately, the parent positions the child in its coordinate space. So when we just say text, hello world, background red, the text view becomes a child of the background. It doesn't look like it from our code, but that's what's really happening here. So if the UI effectively works from bottom to top when it comes to a view and its modifiers. Now consider this layout, text hello world, dot padding 20 points, background red. And this time the conversation is more complicated. Padding no longer offers all its space to its child, up to its text field, the text view here, sorry, because it will subtract 20 points from each side to make sure there's enough space for its padding. That's what it does. And then when the answer comes back from the text view, I need X by Y, it'll add 20 points to each size to pad it out as requested. So again, SwiftUI will say, hey, um, you can have the whole screen. How much do you need content view? Content view will say, well, uh, background, you can have the whole screen. How much do you need? Background will say, um, hey, padding, um, you can have the whole screen. How much do you need? <laughs> and then the padding will say, uh, hey, Content view, uh, hey text here, you can have the whole screen minus 20 points on each side. How much would you need? And the text will say I need X by Y. Padding will say I need X by Y plus 20 points on each side. Background will say the same thing. And then content view will say the same thing. X by Y plus 20 points on all sides. And finally, it gets centered. So the order of our modifiers matters because of the way this conversation flow works. And if you remember, uh, if we said text hello world padding 20 or text background red padding 20, we get different results. You can see right here, and hopefully you can now see why. Background is layout neutral. It determines its size, how much space it needs by asking its child. And its child will say, um, I need exactly X by Y to fit my text exactly that, well, that's what the background will use as well. And the padding gets added afterwards, after the background has been applied. So it's not gonna be colored in red here. It's got sort of this, this gap between red and this purple line showing the area of the whole view. So that's how it works. And there are two interesting side effects that come as a result of these layout rules. First, if your view hierarchy, the whole thing in your view is wholly layout neutral. So the whole thing is layout neutral, then it'll automatically take up all available space. It'll just grow. It doesn't care how big it is. I pros this much. Yeah, fine, I'll have that much, right? For example, uh, shapes and colors, they're just layout neutral. Background red is layout neutral. So we could just say uh, color.red, red, here, and boom, it'll go, yep, up go, full size, because the parent, says, you've got a full screen, how much do you want? Color Reddit goes, I don't really care. Sure, full screen sounds great. It hasn't got a child to ask further and further and further. It goes, yeah, it sounds great. They accept it straight away. And so it's really simple conversation now. The, the, the background uh, understands, it goes, well, sure, I'll, I'll take all the space. So remember, color Reds a view in its own right, right? That's a view in its own right. Uh, but because it's layout neutral, it can be drawn any size. It'll just fill up the full screen. Now, when we use it inside background, like this, the abridged 
Swift UI conversation was, you know, background saying, hey, text, you can have the whole screen. How much do you want? Uh, how much do you want? And it go, oh, I need X by Y. I don't need the rest. Fine. Uh, it'll, it'll use that. It'll then ask color.red. How much do you want? And it'll go, actually, I don't really care. X by Y. I'm cool with that. It's easy going, right? Easy going color. So that's how it works. That's why the layer order really matters. The second interesting side effect, apart from, you know, automatically filling up the full screen, is one we faced earlier. If we use the frame modifier on an image that's not resizable, we'll get a larger frame without the image um, inside changing size. And this might have been confusing before. We might be like, well, make it bigger. But it makes absolute sense once you think about the frame as being the parent of the image because content view would say, uh, hey frame, how much space do you want? The frame say, I want 300 by 300. That's my frame size. Then the frame would say, the image, how much size do you want? The image not being resizable might say, I want 64 by 64. And then it'd go, great, I'll just position you inside my center, step three. So you've got a big frame and a tiny image inside centered by the frame. That's how it works. Now, when you listen, oh, hello dogs. When you listen to Apple's own SwiftUI engineers and read their own documentation, you'll hear them say things like the frame view, or in this case, we have the, the background view. I do see you, I do feel you scratching my arm for a treat. The frame view or the background view, whenever they're views in their own right. It's a really, really important mental model to keep active in your brain cells the entire time. It's exactly what's going on. When we're applying modifiers like background or frame or padding, whenever we are making new views the entire time, let's wrap our existing ones. Remember modified content, rather than just actually directly modifying the text view in place.